second here. Hey, what's up? What's up, dude? Finally at it. Man, finally. Y'all have the sickest practice space, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, man. We try, <laughs> we try to make it like a little getaway, you know? Yeah. Try to make it at least like a cool place to hang out to, you know? Right. Basically kind of make it look like you're actually set up for a show. Yeah, try to get the vibes going too, you know, especially for like when we're writing. I I get it. That actually that's pretty cool. Gets you in the just gets you in that mindset for the Yeah. You wanna you wanna write shit that's gonna get people going, so you gotta pretend like you're there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta get that energy going. Hell yeah. Uh <laughs> I never went full blown with like uh the lighting and stuff, but uh mm -hmm. I I always try to set people up like, you know, like you would for a show. Yeah. Just for sound reasons more than that. Yeah, for sure. Making sure everything sounds good. All, all right. that shit. Fit, man. How you been doing? I'm all right, man. I'm just chilling. Uh, working a lot. Like, working on the band a lot. We're practicing like three, four, five days a week, usually. So, Damn. you know, just always at it. Fuck yeah. Staying busy, at least. Yes, sir. Man, do y'all live pretty close at least? Um, yeah, so Chris lives in Arlington, which is where we jam. Um, okay. Me, Chad, and Sam live in Fort Worth, which is like 15 minutes away from our practice space. And then Matt lives probably like 20 minutes away. So we're all like pretty close to each other, thankfully. Yeah, that's pretty good. Shit. Mm -hmm. Never never been to Texas one, one of these days. No, one of these days, man. It's fucking badass. Oh, speaking of Texas, uh, figured I'd oh. rep one of my favorite Texan bands. Oh, dude, Rigor Mortis fucking rips. I love that band. Absolutely. Fucking uh, Mike Skasha and fucking Bruce both gone now. Yeah, both legends. But, well, fuck, dude. Uh, I guess let's just uh, get right into the gear, huh? Yeah, let's do it. I got all my gear with me. I saw the Iron Bird peeking out behind you. Oh, yeah. Let's start with that. Yeah, so... Uh... <clears throat> For those that don't know or haven't seen, this is my uh, DC Rich Ironbird, uh, 1986 USA Custom. Oh, might be reversed with it, made in USA. Uh, not a whole, whole lot to this guitar. It's got a Kaler bridge. Um, feels way better than a Floyd. It's my preference personally for playing on at least. Uh, got an EMG 81X in the bridge and then 85X in the uh, neck. Uh, these pickups compared to like the regular 81s are a little bit more like have more clarity uh, yeah. just which is like good since we chug a lot you know yeah. uh, all these switches they used to be coil taps uh, they don't do anything anymore just because <laughs> these are active and I had passives in here before so can't really do shit but yeah that's the basic of this guitar uh, it's, it's older than I am actually <laughs> but yeah this thing plays super fucking good best guitar i've ever played hands down do you uh do you know what model of kaler that is by chance i don't actually i'm 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 just now kind of like getting into it i'm trying to learn a little bit more about them mm -hmm. uh, think i know this is one of the older ones because like the new ones they have like a little notch down here that lets you turn it into a fixed bridge yeah mine doesn't have that oh uh, okay yeah but yeah kaler's a badass i like I said, I prefer those a whole lot more to Floyd's just because easier to deal with and set up. And then also, like, for, like, playing, I'm used to, like, raised bridges. And, like, Floyd's kind of sit flat. So, yeah. like, for where my hand placement is, it just feels way better. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, fucking uh, Josh down in the chat. <laughs> Did you see it? Can you yeah, see it? Yeah, we could be brothers. Okay. We yeah. could be. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! I I didn't play in the hat or nothing. God damn it! I, I don't. Yeah, know none that. none of this was coordinated at all. By the way, guys, none of this was coordinated. <laughs> you know, you know what? Yeah, yeah, it was. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I'll show some other guitars I have. Um, oh yeah. So this is a. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Platinum Series Warlock. I bought this a couple months ago. I think I showed this to you in the DM. Yeah. But. Um, this was somebody's like project guitar and I guess like he just like 
kind of didn't want to deal with it anymore because it's not it doesn't have like a clear coat finish on it or nothing it's just got like wood stain that i fucking love that though i love wood stain finishes dude yeah i do too i really like it but it's got like a clear coat finish so it doesn't have the clear coat finish so it feels like kind of rough but yeah this has got regular emg 81 85 in it instead of the x's i mean these sound pretty fucking good um, this one, when I get, like, the room and the time to, like, do it, I'm going to turn it into, like, a project guitar. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sand it down again. And I'm going to keep it as a wood stain, but I'm going to do, like, a red wood stain on it. That's sick. And hopefully get some gold hardware if they make those gold quad bridges. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely, dude. Do it. So don't make fun of me but because it's, it's missing some strings. But this is uh, my LTD GH200. Like I said, it's missing a couple strings, but it's because I haven't played this in fucking over a year at least. Yeah. This is one of those Gary Holt uh, production yeah. models. This is like one of the lower end ones. Got this as like a B stock for like 500 bucks, I think, 400 bucks. It's a really good guitar. It's just the only thing I hate about it, it's got a Floyd Special on it. And the Floyd Specials are just awful. They're, they're trash. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I was trying to fucking change the strings on it, and, like, they just kept, like, popping out every time I, like, bend the bar down. So, um, whenever Floyd Rose isn't, like, backed up by the pandemic anymore, I'm going to get another, like, a real Floyd Rose and put it on there. Yeah. And I'm then, oh, let's see what else. This is my Epiphone Les Paul. Um, That's what you played for a while, wasn't it? With yeah, this is what I played for a while. Actually, so that LTD I just showed you, I used that for the first, like, two shows we ever did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but this uh, this I used pretty much all after that. Uh, like I said, it's an Epiphone, not a Gibson, but it's got a uh, Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge. Uh, it, it had a neck pickup, and then uh, actually on our tour that we did with Plague Years, this pickup, like, started, like, popping out. And I just didn't want to fucking deal with it. So I just, I don't use a neck pickup anyway. So I just cut it out. Yeah. And now I'm ace freeling it, basically. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, this guitar I actually used to record the record with. You ought to put a uh, who, fucking uh, dime bag and uh, be like dime bag and just put like. Yeah, firework. Yeah, a little smoke bomb <laughs> and shit in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I use this to record Crypt of Ice. So, the left track in your ear, when you listen, it's this guitar. And then, I got some of, um, I got some of Chris's and Sam's, too, if you want to see those as well. Sure, why not? All right, so, this is, a uh, one of, this is Chris's Rhodes. This yep. is one of the new 2021 models, and he, like, just got this. Oh, I've looked at it a bunch. Yeah, this <laughs> one, so this one has a Floyd special on it, but this one doesn't suck. I don't know why. Hmm. But it stays in tune and doesn't really give us a whole lot of trouble. But, yeah, it's got the reverse black inlays, which I think are really fucking sick. And then they are reverse headstock. The blacked out logo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this thing's fucking sweet. It plays really good and it sounds really good for a production guitar. And it's a neck through all that. Oh, sick. Yeah, these are these are really fucking badass. I if they made that in a King V, I'd be all over that in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah, same. I used to have a King V, like I actually I bought one with my graduation money <laughs> after I graduated oh. high school. But that, that guitar is long gone. I sold it. Oh yeah. And then right here, I got one of Chris's other guitars. This is a '90s Jackson soloist. I'm not sure exactly what year it is. Mm -hmm. It's just a classic soloist. This thing sounds fucking heavy as shit. It's got such a great wood tone. Awesome. But yeah, he's got the EMG 81X and 85X in this one as well. And then uh, Floyd Rose. Fuck yeah. Yeah, this one sounds pretty, pretty, pretty fucking good. All right. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> this is another one I have. So this is the one and only bass that I have. It's a... Uh, or a clock. And this thing I got for like 80 bucks and it was in like rough, rough shape. Looks okay. like it had been like through like a fucking tornado basically. Hmm. Yeah, I got this pretty cheap and cleaned it up, set it up myself, and it actually sounds really, really good. It's got a nice pop to it. What uh what pickups are in that one? 
I think they're stock pickups. I'm not sure though. I haven't. Oh, okay. Pop them open though. Hey, whatever works. Yeah, it sounds good though. It's, like I said, it's got a real nice pop to it. Nice. And then this is Sam's Warlock. <clears throat> so this is the one that she was playing for a while. Okay. Cool. And this is a NJ. It's one of the cool NJs. Oh, nice. I'm not sure what year it is though. But this thing is pretty sweet too. Dude, all those NJs are badass. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, at that guitar show today, there was a uh, there was an '83 or '84 uh, bitch with like the harpoon NJ headstock with and a Kaler, and we almost bought it, but like the neck on it was like twisted, and we we're like, "Fuck that! I don't want to deal with that." Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, yeah. This is the Sam's main base. This was also used to record Crypt device, so. It's got DeMarzio pickups. I'm not sure which models, though. Okay. But it's got DeMarzios. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Let me see the last thing. Uh, this is Sam's Widow. It's a five-string. Now, this thing. Okay. This thing sounds fucking tough. It is heavy as fucking shit. Nice. It, uh... It instantly makes me think of the Misfits for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I can see why. But yeah, this one's got EMGs in it. Like I said, I wish I could plug it up and show you, but the mic on my phone wouldn't do it justice. This thing sounds yeah. so fucking good. She got this for real cheap, like 500 bucks. Dude, something about active bass is like, I don't know. They just sound tough as fuck. Yeah, like they just sound real good. do for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they sound really, really good. So yeah, that's basically that's all the guitars in the room. Uh, for anyone that showed up late, showed again. So I saw some people asking in the in the chat. My oh yeah, yeah. EMG eighty one X eighty five X, Kaler Tremolo, uh, nineteen eighty six USA Custom Shop. Yeah, this guitar is badass. Love it. Have uh, since you already have the toggle switches installed on that, have you ever thought about getting like one of those like uh, was it the afterburner, the EMG afterburner, the little boost? Uh, so one of these was a boost, and oh, okay. we had, it was, and it, it, since it already had a battery cavity in it for the boost, we just used that for uh, the EMGs. Oh, so, right. But I mean, since it's actives, I mean, you don't really, at least I don't really need a boost for it. Uh, I think it's more of like a Kerry King thing, and it, which you know he's playing eight hundred, so mm -hmm. I'm sure he has all the all the boost in the front end he can get. Yeah, I mean I'm playing sixty five oh five, and I've got all the right. <laughs> I need and and more. Yeah, yeah, I guess it'd be a little bit overkill at that point, but yeah, especially to hear uh, him do the fucking spaghetti shit. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing nope I don't think any of us do really <laughs> um, you uh what you have in the Ironbird before the the 81X's and... so before the 81X's I had a JB Jazz set okay and, and before that when I bought it it came with a, a bare knuckle aftermaths damn yeah it had those in there and those sounded good but it made the guitar sound like a little too bright for like the tone i'm trying to go for so i took them out and i actually sold them a few months ago okay wow yeah they, they sound good but it was just a little too bright for my liking i feel you uh which i i still have i got one guitar with uh emgs in it mm -hmm. just the 81 and 60 um it's an eclipse um Running it into my Mesa or like any kind of like, or like a 5150 circuit kind of amp, like those 90s high gain amps. Uh, I don't know. So something about EMGs just like hits the front end just, just the right way. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these EMGs sound good in my 6505. I love it. Absolutely. I, uh, I was actually doing a little refresh listen to the new album. Uh, you know, on my way to drop my kids off and then back. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, uh, God, um, I think it was uh, Twisting the Knife and Gravedigger. 
like the tone on the whole album's killer, but maybe it's just like the uh, the tempo of those songs and the fact that they have like the build ups at the beginning, uh -huh. just the overall pacing. It really, really hit like everything hits so much harder in those songs. I like and the the tone just sounds so massive. Yeah, they're 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 a little bit slower and like more mid tempo pace, so it really gives like the tone like a chance to shine, you know. Since I'm not playing like yeah. crazy fast and all that shit. Yeah, like uh, I know I know you all get ball thrower comparisons mm -hmm. and stuff like that all the time, but uh, especially on those songs, I hear at least in the moments. Uh, I don't know if you remember Abominable Iron Slaw. Or mm -hmm. or Zayo, mm -hmm. no, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, get maybe give them a listen whenever we get out of here. But uh, just very like just the big, thick, heavy tones and and the mid tempo grooves. Uh, it just sounds so brutal. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. Yeah, there. Which uh, Zayo uh, Zayo kind of made a comeback, but Abominable they've been you know, broke it up for quite a while. They're both, like, early 2000s kind of metalcore. Oh, okay. But not, like, not, like, Kill Switch or nothing. Yeah, not, not the fucking corny shit? No, no, they're, they're, like, just real fucking, just real nasty sounding. Real nasty, real heavy. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, that's the kind of metalcore I can fuck with, is, like, the, it was, like, the early shit that was actually heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Converge. Yeah, pretty much. I get, I guess Marauder too. I guess you can kind of count them. Yeah, a little but, bit. Yeah. Uh, and then you said you're running the just a sixty-five five. For yeah, the, I got my, I got my pedal board too. If you want to see it. Absolutely, let's go. <laughs> oh, so, uh, on this, I'm not running a whole lot. I'm just a tuner, uh, Maxon ST9 Pro Plus. Uh, this is the same overdrive that Cannibal Corpse uses. That's the yeah. entire reason that I bought it. Because <laughs> Cannibal Corpse uses it. Like I didn't even watch. Uh, I didn't even like watch a demo video or nothing. I just saw that like they used it and I it immediately. Right. And then ISP decimator. I mean, you got to have a noise gate if you're playing metal. Yeah. And then I got a little Dunlop uh, mini volume just to help with like the stops and all that shit. And then this is what I use to play our samples live. It's a Digitech Jam Man. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's just a loop station, but I can put all of our samples on here and just yeah. hit them with my foot and change the channels with my foot, so we don't have to like have a sound guy do all that shit, you know? Sure. So, yeah. Uh, it's, oh, I was just gonna say, I think um, Mastodon used to like uh, one of the guitar players, literally had that same thing on his board for samples and loops and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I bought this because uh, Dave from Devourment, the bass player, he had. Yeah. One. That's how they played their samples live. And so he sold me one of his old ones. And then I ended up buying this one because it had all the switches built in. Do you uh, do you go from that, like, out to the PA, like, a separate thing just for that? or? Yeah, I, I basically just go, like, direct into, at least, like, when we practice, it, it goes, like, straight into our mixer if it goes okay. into our PA. Cool. Nice. So, yeah, I actually got Joe from uh, Lone Wolf. I think I told you he's working on some pedals for, for me right now. He's doing a... Don't tell no one, but he's doing a, uh, <laughs> a like a Maxon. He's basically gonna like do his own version of the Maxon for me, and then if I like it, we'll probably turn it into its own thing. Okay, I, I think I think we talked about that a while back. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we were just both talking Lone Wolf in general, mm -hmm. uh, and he 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 had a guitar that had the 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 EMG X's in it. Yeah, that's, kind of what, so that's what made us want to buy those. So it's this fucking uh, it's a it's a Mike Shannon Warrior. It's a one of yeah. one. That thing is a fucking beast. It was set up in like C standard, and it made my like our guitars in drop A sound like fucking puny. It was insane. That thing sounded so good. Damn, I may have to. Uh, I feel like no one really talks about the X's. They've been out forever. I didn't even know they existed until like I played on that guitar. I mean, like, I've always known about them, but the thing with EMG, it's, like, outside of 
the mainstays, like the 81, mm -hmm. 85, and the 60, it doesn't seem like anyone ever really gives any of their other models a, a chance. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm guilty of the same thing, but uh, I tried a 57 and a 66 in a mm -hmm. guitar, and it just sounded like a really weak 81 and 60. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so I was like, yeah, I'll just stick to my same old, same old. Yeah, I feel you. I mean, I mean, there's a reason those things are like the tried and true ones, you know, like the, the Duncan JBs, the EMG 81s. I mean, there's a reason those are the most used ones, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't have any, I've been on a modding spree the past year, but, mm -hmm. you know, uh, nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary. Um, that Eclipse, of course, it came with EMGs, but I've got two Ibanez RGs, a six and a seven string. Mm hmm seven i've got the duncan nazgul sentient set uh which are fucking great i mean uh they're so good i don't think i've heard those they were designed by keith marrow back when he was with duncan still okay so think of Mar keith marrow's tone um there are quite a few people that were using those for a minute um mm -hmm. the sentient is like the best neck pickup ever like if you like those shreddy bubbly like 90s death metal kind of lead tones mm -hmm. that's that thing that one i'll definitely have to check out for sure for sure yeah like um like it gets that it gets that cool rounded like i said bubbly kind of tone mm -hmm. but everything's so articulate and it's like got enough output like it's made for shredding on yeah um then i got a jb and another r and another rg and then I've got my BC Rich Beast with a X2N in it, um, which is like my first Demarzio, and it's sick. Now I want it in like everything. <laughs> Fuck yeah! But uh, and then uh, is Joe is Joe just uh, working on the the Maxon clone? Right so now? he's also so he's also doing a he's building tan housers for us, and they're. The only thing that's going to be special about them is, like, we're just going to screen print them. They're going to be called the ice blocks, for us at least. But there's no, like, modding or anything done. It's just, like, the no other normal tan housers. Is that his, like, kind of like a preamp type pedal? or what it's, a, it? it's a dual noise gate. So it's, like, two oh. blockades in one. So okay. what we're going to use for it is so we can uh, run one part of it through our effects loop. So we can cut out, like, the amp hiss. Mm -hmm. And then um, also for our... Uh, uh, our guitars to cut out like that noise okay cool yeah because i like me personally i'm like super like just anal about sound especially live and when like there's like the amp buzz and like the amp hissing in the back like it just drives me crazy so i'm i'm trying to get rid of that for us just to help everything sound better you know yeah i'm i'm right there with you i i can't stand it mm -hmm. Uh, now, if I was playing, like, a grind band or, like, a punk band, like, yeah. if, I, if I, like, wanted to make a lot of noise, like, I wouldn't give a shit. But for this, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to, like, just sound as heavy as I can and, like, be as, like, like have as much clarity as I can, too. No, I, absolutely. Because um, I, and I've, I've played, uh, I've played some really, some venues with some very, very sketchy wiring that mm -hmm. just ungodly noise. Yeah, and all the like they're like fucking daisy chaining power with like a million extension cords and power yeah. strips and all that. Yeah, and if you're using like a one spot daisy chain yourself, oh, it's even worse. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, which at the time I think that's all I had, you know, um, just a hand like real bare bones setup. But with the dual rack, I, I I had like the gain pretty much cranked on it, so. Mm -hmm. It was a bad time. Uh, I think all I had was an NS2 in the front. Mm -hmm. So you just had just a fucking wash of white noise. Yeah, I was running an NS2 before, and it that's like the worst noise suppressor ever. I hate it. <laughs> uh, it's all I knew for the longest time. Um, but I actually... <laughs> I'm having... Uh, you know Michael Klein Audio? Yeah, he's he's building me uh, one of his ball gag noise gates right now. 
Uh-huh. Um, but she's, like, waiting on parts or something. Um, but, like, right now I just have, like, one of those cheap little Donner uh, <laughs> noise gates. <laughs> yeah, man. I've seen those Lonely Ghosts he makes. I want to get one of those. That's on the list, too. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I've got... Um, I got one of his, the Christogram. What is that? It's his overdrive slash distortion. Um, just think of it as, as like an overdrive with a three band EQ, mm -hmm. a aggression knob, which I guess shapes like kind of the high mids. Mm -hmm. And it's got enough gain on tap to where if you wanted to run it into the front of a clean amp, you could still get like your full blown like metal rhythm tone out of it. Okay. Uh, sounds pretty badass. Yeah. And uh <laughs> it's pretty sick. We we kind of tailored. I told him what I wanted uh mainly I'd be using it as a boost for a, for the dual rack. Mm -hmm. But if I was to play in front of anyone else's amp, I want to make sure I have still all the gain on tap. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, in case you got to use something else. Yeah, and I have used it in the in front of a like a a little Rollin cube, like just bare bones clean. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it it definitely does. Will definitely get you there. That's sick. Um, he's he's got all kinds of stuff. He's got like a he's got a Marshall preamp kind of pedal. Mm -hmm. Um couple different fuzz pedals i actually need to hit him up after this i i was talking to him earlier about uh <laughs> i just randomly like uh i hit him up i was like man it's like did we talk about um i, I almost don't want to say i was ah, fuck it whatever <laughs> <laughs> okay man we'll do it yeah. live yeah if i spoil something i'll spoil something I was like, man, is like, have, I, have you and me ever talked about you making like a TC preamp style boost mm -hmm. or, you know, like a the Fortin like 33 or grind or whatever, you know, same circuit. Mm -hmm. I was like, we were, you know, and he's like, actually, he's like, uh, let me get home and I'm, and I'm going to check on something. Like, okay, that's cool. Uh, so he might have something like that in the works soon. Fuck yeah. Something to compete with all the, the fort and stuff. That's sick. I'm excited to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all the clips I've heard of that, I haven't got to play through one. I've wanted to for years because of like the 90s Meshuggah stuff. Uh huh. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of brands out there doing it now. Uh, Fortin obviously being the most known one. But God. They're so expensive. Oh, dude, they're fucking... It's like an arm and a leg for those. And maybe maybe I'm just being, like, pessimistic or something, but I can't help but think it's mostly marketing. <laughs> it could be. I don't I don't know. I think I think he knows how to play the market really well. Just, yeah. Just to ride the hype train. Yeah. Well, man, uh, let me see. Uh, I know you guys have been really busy, uh, despite not touring, mm -hmm. um, putting out like a lot of video content and stuff like that. Do you guys have anything in the pipeline right now that you can talk about or, um, as far as video content goes, we're actually working on a playthrough videos. So those should be out like maybe in the next month or two. It just depends okay. on how we line some things up. We're actually working on, um, we're, we're going to announce it pretty soon. I can announce it here since it's, I mean, we're about to announce it anyway. Uh, so we're going to do like a record signing event. And then after that, we're going to have like an after party at this brewery called Division Brewery in Arlington. And we're going to like put out our own beer, basically. That's sick. Yes, yeah, so we're getting our own beer brew. And we're just going to have fun, social distance, wear masks, all that shit. Be safe, yeah. of course. But <clears throat> yeah, we got that coming up uh, at the end of May. Ooh. And then uh, we're actually... Uh, working on some tours right now. That's all I can really say as far as playing live goes. We got some tours in the works that'll definitely be happening this year for sure. Sick. Yeah. Um, 
what kind of beer is it going to be? Uh, so it's actually an IPA, but um, it's going to be based off this one beer they have there now. I can't remember what it's called, but literally tastes like a fucking blueberry cobbler. It's insane. It doesn't taste like alcohol at all. It just tastes like a carbonated liquid blueberry cobbler. It's insane. Huh. So what we're going to do is it's going to be called Frost Hammer. And uh, nice. it's going to be like a blueberry raspberry like <clears throat> uh, IPA. <laughs> That's sick. Uh, is it? Do you know if they ship out or anything? Oh yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be up for sale online, but I, it'll probably okay. go fast. I think he's only doing like two hundred fifty cans the first run or something like that. Right. Yeah, it just depends on how much we sell that night too. Gotcha. But I mean, if it does well, we're definitely gonna make some more of it. Uh, I always, I always mess out on all like the cool limited beer runs. The... See, I, I, I don't drink a whole lot, so I don't really care for special beers. But I yeah. mean, lots of metal bands have made beers, and we wanted to do it anyway. And we just wanted to make sure it was like something good that like we all like. Because I mean, me, Sam, and Chad, like we don't, we all don't drink that much. But this, this beer is like really good. It's really good. It doesn't taste like beer at all. <laughs> it's it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Uh, I think I think the only one I've ever got to really try was that pig destroyer beer. I don't think I tried that one. It was pretty good. Yeah, I know. I know. I've had the Iron Maiden one. And I didn't like it. It was, it was not that good. There's a a friend of mine. His dad own a local burger place, and it's like metal themed. Mm -hmm. And um, they they get all the the limited edition beers coming. You know, <clears throat> they always have like thirty some different you know uh, drafts or whatever at a time, like all kinds of crazy stuff. And I know they've got like the was it the Trooper or whatever it's called. Uh, yeah. Uh, never ordered it. Never had an inclination, but yeah, it's it's not that great. At least for me personally. I don't think it's that great. Gotcha. But well, yeah. Other, other than that, we've just been writing a lot. We're working on the next record, trying to write as much as we can before we get back out on the road later this year. Do you have a date set? Uh, not yet, but it's maybe gonna be in 2022. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I mean, once we once touring starts back up, like it's gonna be like pedal to the metal zero to 100 like it's going to be non-stop for us so we're trying to just knock out as much as we can while we still have some time gotcha uh sorry i was looking at something uh, <laughs> well uh is there uh so like uh as far as your uh live rig moving forward pretty much what we've seen pretty much everything that you've shown here you guys are pretty much settled on that moving forward with your uh, actual rigs like your live rig yeah yeah so it's uh so me and chris both well i play a regular 6505 chris plays a, a plus mm -hmm. and then we both run into uh two oversized mesa ports while we full stack it um sam's using a ampeg what is it svt svt 4 pro Okay. So it's, that's the one that like everyone uses basically yeah. into an Ampeg A10, all standard stuff, you know, because we, we like to use like PDs and Mesas because if we ever need to like play a show, like we can get those back lines like anywhere, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, but everything I've shown you so far is pretty much what we use live. Like I'm going to use that Ironbird when we play live and tour and use those pedals at least until I get those ones that Joe are making for me. Right. Uh, somebody was asking, you answered, mo you pretty much answered most of it. Somebody was asking, uh, what kind of pedals do Sam and, well, Sam and Chris, what, you, what all they use? So Chris, uh, uses all the same as me, except the sample and the volume pedal. Uh, he uses a tuner, um, Max on ST9 Pro Plus and, uh, ISP Decimator as well. Um, Sam pretty much the same thing tuner uh isp decimator but she uses the uh <laughs> the caveman pedal from lone wolf audio okay so we get we use that for to get our like dirty gritty sound 
I, I instantly thought about a uh, little bass part, the little in between bass part and twist the knife. Mm -hmm. it, it nasty sounding. It's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. We're we're really proud of that one, especially. Yeah, that yeah, song we be. actually wrote uh, three days before we went into the studio. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah. Well, so it was a whole different song entirely. Mm -hmm. And then we just like completely rearranged and like rewrote all the riffs for it over the span of like three days. And then like the day we finished it was like the day before we went to the studio. Nice. <laughs> what am I smoking? Yeah. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you decide. Okay. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's do a little back, a little backstory here. Yeah. Uh, so when did you guys actually form Frozen Soul? Uh, so it's a little bit long and complex, but I'll try to explain as best as I can. So back in like 2015 or 2016, roughly around that time is when me and Chad met. And we met at a local game store here called uh, Generation X Comics and Games. And we both played Magic there. But uh, I had never seen him, at least I, I'd like never recognized him until like one day I went in. He was wearing it fucking big old obituary shirt with a big old fucking slowly re rock print on the back so like oh this dude's in the metal i'm gonna go talk to him you know and at the time i was like looking to start a band and so uh we just kind of shot the shit over a few games of magic and then like a few weeks later uh, i asked him if he wanted to jam and so from there we started jamming with a few different people and uh have you heard of the band judiciary judiciary yeah yeah so we uh, we were playing with a couple of their members for a little bit, and uh, we lived about like forty five minutes away from them. So we were going out there like every week to go jam, and it ended up just not working out because me and Chad wanted to do different things from like what they wanted to do, and so we just kind of put Frozen Soul to like rest for a bit, and then uh, we started End Times back up, which is one of Chad's like it's the first band Chad ever started on his own. So we brought that band back to life. We wrote and recorded a whole LP, started playing shows for a bit. Then once we finished recording that, we got uh, Frozen Soul back on the ball. And that was, um, I think that was like summer of 2018 is when that was. And so from there, I was using like leftover riffs and like other things that we'd written for End Times that were just like a little bit too heavy for like the style they were, we were going for for that band. Because End Times is like a real epic sounding band, real melodic. Whereas oh, yeah. Frozen Soul is just heavy as shit. All right. Um, so, yeah, we started, we, Frozen Soul, like, at least, like, the current incarnation of Frozen Soul, like, really, like, started in, like, the summer of 2018. Okay. Damn. Yeah. You guys have uh, climbed fast. Yeah, I mean, it's been a fucking wild ride, I'll say that at least. <laughs> it feels like, it feels like we've been a band for 10 years when we've really only been a band for, like, two or three years and then you know taking into account pretty much all last year was shut down yeah it was that was an experience in itself like being in a band you know because we've all like been playing in bands for like 10 plus years going on tours and like playing shows like every weekend basically and just like overnight it was gone you know it was real yeah. real jarring that's <laughs> i couldn't imagine I mean, every it sucks for everybody, you know, not going to shows or, you know, people losing their jobs left and right. Mm -hmm. But anybody that's actually in, uh, like, live entertainment, their entire livelihoods just took a pause for an entire year. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I worked security at a, venue, uh, at a venue, so, I mean, even that, like, I wasn't even working, and I couldn't play in a band, so... I was doing nothing basically. Oh yeah. Lot. That's God damn. That's, <laughs> that sucks, man. Yeah. But I mean, I, luckily I was very, very fortunate to get unemployment for a little bit. So that helped me like stay afloat for a while. But then I uh, ended up getting a job at guitar center back in like November. Okay, cool. For like, uh, like black Friday and all that. But I've been working there since. Yeah. <laughs> Are your, uh, do you have coworkers that fit like the kind of guitar center employee stereotype or is everyone there pretty cool? Oh, actually everyone there is like pretty fucking cool. 
Nice. Yeah, everyone, was, everyone was pretty cool. Uh, Chris works there too. He's been a sales guy for a while. Oh, but, cool. Uh, uh, I work in the warehouse, so I handle like all the shipping. I like get all the gear and everything new we get in out on the floor and all that shit. Set up guitars, get them ready, things like that. That's cool. So I, wor I work with a shipping, receiving warehouse job too. Uh, it's fucking brutal, man. Like earlier this week, we got like a. 500 piece truck and we normally get like two to 250 then mm -hmm. most of it was guitars because we got a huge sale going on right now so our warehouse was a fucking disaster for like a week <laughs> man that's crazy because have, have shipments been pretty pretty steady for you all yeah they've been they've been real steady i mean we get we get two trucks in a week but oh, wow. usually like like i said they're like between 200 to 250 pieces that's, I mean, it's Guitar Center, so it's like, what can you expect? But yeah, pretty much. Because like um, all the local like mom and pop shops around here, they they stay scarce. When they do get something in, it's gone almost instantly. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. But you know, I'll come by back to get one of those Ingle. Somebody's gonna come back to get it an Ingle head. Oh, shit. Man, I want to get a fireball. Me and Chris both want to get fireballs and try them out with our setups. A lot of people like I, – I, I, the fireball seems to either be like a love it or hate it kind of amp for people. Mm -hmm. At least the people I've talked to anyway. What From what I've played and like fucked around with on it, like on other friends' rigs and their guitars, mm -hmm. I think they sound fucking really good. Yeah. But I won't like truly like something until I hear it how like – I want it to sound, you know. Right. Unless you get to play it through your setup, mm -hmm. your guitar, your cab, everything, you don't really know whether it's going to work for you or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always that risk. I uh, I really want a Savage or an Invader, but they're <laughs> crazy expensive. Yeah, like what, two, three grand almost? Yeah. I mean, they got like the... Uh, 60 watt savage mm -hmm. um that's a little more realistic i guess yeah oh man chris has this uh i don't know what i don't know what exact model it is but chris has a diesel and that thing is a fucking beast those things sound insane yeah yeah you don't need a overdrive for those things it's it's fucking insane yeah i've never i've never plugged into a diesel ever they're they're fun to jam around on but they're also really, really expensive. <laughs> like those, those heads are usually like three or four thousand dollars. Yeah. Any of those German brands here mm -hmm. in the states are going to be pretty, pretty hefty. Yeah, but they sound fucking incredible. I will say they sound really, really good. I believe it. Uh, is there, uh, is there any gear on, on that note? Is there any gear that you're kind of eyeballing right now? Anything besides the Fireball? Um, not really. I mean, I'm always on the lookout for pedals to use for like trade bait, you know? Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. But as far as like specific <laughs> gear, no, I'm, I've mostly been waiting on BC Ridge to drop some of those new production models so I can oh, yeah. get at least one of those Warlocks. They say that they're going to do like the Mark II Ironbirds with the Harpoon headstock and that those are going to be made in Japan and those are supposed to come this year, but I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. So... I've uh, I've been checking their website. Um, they don't even have they got listings for certain guitars, but no pictures yet. Uh huh. Uh, there's a couple I've been trying to keep my eye out for, like the Prophecy Two series, mm -hmm. which they I think we were talking about whenever I shared the satin white and satin black warlocks that they posted. Mm -hmm. That. I think they just had either black or maybe the carbon fiber binding. Yeah, all they had on the website was black, but then they got the white one and the red ones in. So those are up on their website now. The red ones look real fucking cool, too. Is it like a candy apple red or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I kind of like the like the hot rod finishes and stuff like that. Like the candy oh, I apple red I think and green. really cool on guitars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, uh, who is uh, Sonny Lombardozzi? You know him? Mm -mm. Uh, and well, he was in Incantation. Oh, okay. Um, uh, he's working on like a new thing now called Arise from Worms, but 
he's got um he's got this really sick halo uh that's in like a like a candy apple red and then a candy apple purple mm -hmm. like you know just more more like hot rod kind of finishes and i don't know i just, I just think it looks sick yeah Might be a little too like flashy for sure. some people fuck yeah now with triple abalone <laughs> <laughs> oh god Suppose supposedly they're they're listening and they're not they know people don't want the abalone and all that. So <coughs> like I said, I'll believe it when I see it. It someone else said that said it too. It reminds me of like um like what L T D and Schechter were doing in like the early two thousands. Yeah, like, exactly. That's what I thought. I was like, man, y'all are like not to talk shit, but it's like, man, y'all are behind. <laughs> yeah. But then again, like it is hard to like, I mean, like they, I'm pretty sure they went under new ownership in 2018. Right. Or something like yeah. that. Like they, I mean, I got to give them that way. Like, it's, it's not hard to fucking take over a guitar company, you know, or it's not easy. I mean, it, yeah. That's, so, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the abalone's pretty ugly. We got in a bunch of B stocks actually at work the other day of those like abalone bc riches mm -hmm. and man they actually like play pretty good it's just they look stupid <laughs> i i believe it <clears throat> i'm sure they all play play great mm. but yeah those those the warlocks and then uh we also got some of those shredzillas um a while back actually we got one of those mockingbirds in and chris actually bought it Oh, and yeah. uh, we, like, jammed on it for a bit, but, like, neither of us liked it. It didn't feel good to play at all. Really? Yeah. I I really, really liked that uh, that Satin Black Mockingbird, mm -hmm. um, where it had the six-in-line headstock and the Floyd and actives. Mm -hmm. It, uh, <clears throat> of course, I, I really like um, Roger Bojard's Mockingbird. Mm-hmm. You know, with, with like the Kaler and everything. Yeah, the, the old I, MJC has. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of, I kind of just wanted something close to that, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I can't do it with the abalone. I just can't. yeah, I can't. Yeah, that's the one we got too. Was that black one you were talking about? It was, it was black with that abalone binding. And how do you like the Fishmans? Yeah, it had the Fishmans. Did you like them? Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't a fan of them. They, they were. At least to me, they sounded a little muddy. Hmm. That's crazy. Everyone compl Everyone says like, "Oh, they're so much clearer sounding than EMGs," and like, just oh, maybe we just didn't like EQ our <laughs> shit right. But to me, it sounded a little like it was muddying things up. Hmm. Well, good to know. <laughs> I haven't got to try them. Uh, just don't really see a ton of guitars out there with them where they're so new. Yeah. But I mean, it's most of, most of those, uh, like most of those BC riches have them. If you ever find one, you come across the jam on. Gotcha. It, yeah. I, I don't know. I, th I, I, I see what they were trying to do, mm -hmm. but I, they were trying to appeal to a crowd that never had any interest in them to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everyone thought that they made like the lame guitars for the longest time. I blame new metal. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> and honestly, I didn't fucking like Warlocks for the longest time. I thought they were like the corniest guitars ever. Yeah. But then I don't know. I don't know what happened, but now I like them. The first guitar I ever wanted was one of the Kerry King Warlocks. <laughs> when I was like, <laughs> man, that that was those Kerry King like signatures that he had those were like my first impression of bc rich oh dude like like back in the day i was like man those are kind of like lame I don't, I don't know if i like those this is so fucking funny i just happened to glance over this was uh when i was like 12 13 years old i was looking through a guitar catalog with a buddy mm -hmm. um because i was like you know finally interested wanting to look at guitars and he was into classic rock and stuff he was showing me these fenders and gibsons and prs and i, I found this ad in the mat in his catalog and i was uh -huh. like oh. 
It's like, whoa, who's that? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like for a fucking, like, what, a rack tuner or something. Uh-huh. And I was like, whoa, who's that? And he's like, oh, it's, that's Gary King. He plays in a band called Slayer. He's like, eh, they're, they're whatever. Like, <laughs> like, man, his guitar looks cool. I want that. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, this is BC Ranch. They're just, yeah, they're whatever. He played some really cool ones back in the day. The I like the ZSPs, the Primal Rage looking ESP. Yeah, that fucking Red Tiger one. That one was so sick. Yeah, it's a choice. Mm-hmm. I think somebody, some follower on the page, I think actually has one, and they were bragging about it to me. Oh no shit! Because like, I posted about it, and I was like, just, just lusting after it, you know. Yeah, I saw I saw one of those Carrie King customs. I can't remember which one it was though, but one of those Carrie King ones like popped up on Reverb, but it was like fourteen or fifteen grand. Mm. I wonder why he even left ESP. Like, and I mean Hanneman stayed with him. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm sure BC Rich cut him a better deal or something. Probably. So, yeah, it is what it is. Now he has um. Now he has the earwig. <laughs> which you were actually you were telling yeah you were telling me about that and you got to play one. Oh yeah so yeah we got in one of his uh custom bees and it actually is pretty cool uh that one's got a kaler on it the kaler on that feels like effortless to use it's it's insane uh next not it's not like my favorite it's not like super fat but it's not super thin either but yeah. it plays pretty good sounds pretty good too awesome uh, every time I've played a Kaler, they've always felt effortless to me. But uh, I, 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 I played way more Floyd Roses, so I always <laughs> compare it to that. Yeah. I was comparing it to my Kaler. My Kaler, it's not hard to use, but the, the, the Kaler on that Kerry King V was, like, way, way easier to use. I could, like, push it down with a pinky. Oh, uh, yeah. Man. More I think about it, the more I, I I think I need a guitar with a Kaler. But yeah, you do, man. You really yeah. do. Just need to find a good deal on one because they're so expensive. Mm-hmm. I was just talking to uh, Tony from Zeno Guitars about, you know, what it would take to put a Kaler in my in my Beast. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> I just I want a Brian Hoffman guitar. Yeah, That's all it is. I don't blame you. I really, I really, really want a beast, but I want, I want to find like a real one with a full size body and the full size headstock. That's not this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got the first one I could find, but mm-hmm. um, Kevin Frassard just actually just put out a, a cool video where he was comparing his, uh, his, his. He's got two beasts. And yeah, I watched that video. Yeah, yeah. Man, that guy's got such a sick collection. He's so, he's got some sick fucking guitars, especially that saw guitar. Mm-hmm. Oh sick. man, did you see that Cannibal Corpse cover he did? I'm pretty sure he used that guitar. Yeah. That Cannibal Corpse cover that was fucking nuts. And it was like that single wasn't even out very long when he did that cover. Mm-hmm. Like maybe a month or so. Yeah. So was it even that? Maybe it was. I don't know. I thought it was like within a week or two or something, but maybe not. Yeah, all I know is that it was right after the album came out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you all just had like a little listening party. What'd you think of it? Man, so it was fucking. God damn, that record's insane. It's just like, like from start to finish, just pulverizing. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and like we came in here, we smoked a bunch of weed and like blasted it on our PA, and it was like. Like we had, we had to pause like halfway through because like whoa god damn what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> it it's intense I uh, my my vinyl just showed up mm-hmm. last week um uh, I'm sorry I'm trying to go back and forth reading the chat and talking oh it's all good dude uh yeah um. And it came with like the digital download and stuff. So I've been trying to, uh, you know, give it enough spins to like really kind of pick it apart and like really mm-hmm. like give it a, a good listen. Yeah. Uh, since then, I've been listening to it like here and now to like 
digest it more so I can like yeah. do repeat listens and stuff. But yeah, like the first initial listen, just cranked it on our PA, smoked a bunch of weed and just got fucking pounded to, yeah. to death, basically. <laughs> Felt like. It, it's just so freaking fast. And like, uh, really, I think they were talking about how it kind of, it's like a little bit of a throwback to like the thrashier mm -hmm. earlier days and everything. Yeah. And you can definitely hear like Eric's influence on on, on the Yeah, that's what I noticed about this is like you can hear you can definitely hear like which songs are like Rob's, which songs are Alex's, and then which songs are uh Rutan's. And that's not a bad thing because I mean they each bring their own like flavor to the <laughs> court's table, you know? Yeah. But it's still like it's all all those songs are just so fucking good. And uh I'm I'm a diehard Pat O'Brien fan. Yeah, same. Uh, but uh, it it is kind of cool. Like it probably sounds blasphemous, but I wasn't super stoked on the last couple records. You um, know, man, I really wasn't either. Like Red right Before Black when it came out, I was like, man, this has some heavy songs on it, but I wasn't like going back to it all the time. You know, exactly. Same with Skeletal Domain. I wasn't, like, going back to it as much as the other ones. No, for sure. And even Torture, uh, other than Scourge of Iron, which is one of their most banger songs ever, mm -hmm. uh, other than that particular song, I, I, don't, I don't spin that album very much. I'll, I'll say the song Encased in Concrete on that record, that's one of my favorite Cannibal songs. Oh, that is on that record, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll I especially it. like it for the music video because that music video is really cool. Yeah. All right. We'll give them two. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, because uh, I think, like, really, when I got into Cannibal, I was I was in middle school and and Kill came out, mm -hmm. um, and that's when I found it. I bought it and a couple other CDs from Fye when mm -hmm. that was still a thing. Um, and, uh, now in hindsight, Kill was sort of like them kind of getting like a second wind mm -hmm. or something, it seemed like. like. Kill's actually the first record I bought from Cannibal Corpse and also had the songs I had first ever heard from Cannibal Corpse, which was Make Them Suffer. That was the first Cannibal Corpse song I ever heard. And I was like, what the fuck? This is insane. And like at the time, I was like super, like super into thrash. I hadn't like discovered death metal yet, you know? Mm -hmm. But I always heard Cannibal Corpse's name around. And I was like, and one day I was like, I'm going to check this out. And it just blew me away. And so I bought that album right away. And then from there, it's just been a deep dive down the hole. And now they're like one of my favorite bands. Yeah. It, it's kind of hard to get in this genre and not, you know, worship at the throne of Cannibal. Yeah, pretty much. But, I mean, they just kind of, they're just one of those bands that really encompass everything that is the genre. Mm -hmm. um, you know, them and, <clears throat> them and Deicide and uh, Morbid, Morbid gets a little off, off trail mm -hmm. here and there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I love Morbid Angel, you know, yeah, not, never to talk shit. Oh, I love Morbid Angel, but I mean, I do like some of their stuff. It took me a while to really like Morbid Angel, but I do, I do like some of their stuff. <clears throat> uh, the stuff I, the stuff I like, it's killer. But I, I'm not a big fan of like interlude tracks uh -huh. too much. Like maybe like a, a short like intro kind. Of, well, like like you all have on mm -hmm. some on on some yeah. parts, like cool intros to. And then just get right into it. Uh huh. I don't need like, why is there have to be a minute and a half to three minutes of cricket noises? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I get it if you're like trying to build like an atmosphere, you know. But at the same time, I get what you're. I get where you're coming from. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's like a fine line. Yeah. That. It, it it just it really depends on the band and like the like the vibe they're trying to go for. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Uh well, so it was uh well, you kind of answered another one of my questions. Like Cannibal was pretty much mm -hmm. it was basically thrash metal, and then discovered Cannibal, and then mm -hmm. that kind of got you into the genre. Yeah, and then another uh discovery was Death. 
specifically the song uh, Genetic Reconstruction. Okay. Yeah, that song, that was the first death song I ever heard. And uh, I ended up uh, a few months later, I went to a show, actually at the same place where we're doing our record signing, I went to a show at this uh, record store. And uh, they had like a $5 like bin of like metal CDs. Mm -hmm. And so I found a uh, symbolic in there. And I was like, oh, hey, I like this band. I liked what I heard before. I'm going to buy this record <laughs> and check it out. And so symbolic is my favorite record by death for sure. And so that's how I got into them. And then from there, it's just, you know, check the, uh, like, thank yous to see, like, what are the bands they know, you know, what are the bands they're shouting out. And then, of oh. course, the internet, just deep diving down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Someone says more guitar solos, less crickets. More whammy. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was kind of the same way. I would always uh, look at, like what t-shirts the bands are wearing mm -hmm. and uh yahoo music or yahoo video was a big one for me oh really <laughs> yeah just like trying to deep dive because it i mean this is pre-youtube so mm -hmm. you know just that was one of the very few outlets that you could find but not a lot of cool shit that way mm -hmm. uh, and you know i remember being like a little teenage mall rat and, uh, you know, whatever money I had to buy lunch, I would be like, yeah, I'm going to go to FYE instead. And see if I can buy. <laughs> and, pretty sure we all did that at some point. And there was a, there was a couple guys there that were pretty cool. And I, I could buy, like, parental advisory stuff, even though I wasn't 18. <laughs> <laughs> that whole thing. Uh, buying, oh, bros. <clears throat> yeah. buying, like, Cannibal and Cradle of Filth and uh, the first Children of Bodom record, mm -hmm. uh, Hate Breeder, I think, the green uh, one. I never got into Children of Bodom. That first record was really cool. I mean, it that's the only one that still really holds up, I think, because mm -hmm. it's like kind of has like that early melodic death metal kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, they kind of just turned into, I don't know, just like another metal band. Yeah. Fast, but Alexi, Alexi did shred. Yeah, so. he was a fucking great guitar player, dude. He really was. For sure. I, I've always I, I got real heavy into like the shred thing for the first, I don't know, six, seven years of my playing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and... Then when I finally had my first like high school band, I couldn't write for crap like, you know. <laughs> like Yeah, it, see man, it was opposite for me. I've I've never really been a shredder. Like I can play leads, but I can't like shred, you know, because I've never really been about it. I've always like been really into the riffs and I've always been a riffer. Yeah. And I've always wanted to be a songwriter specifically. So I focus more on that more than like being all noodly and stuff. I guess the, my train of thought when I was a kid was that the better I got, the easier it would be to write music. Yeah. Which isn't like a crazy notion. Not necessarily untrue, but, but it's also it, not necessarily true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have no idea what we were just asked. What do you, what think, do you think? I hate God. Oh, is that is that what you mean? I hate God. If if that's what he means, I absolutely love I hate God and all the Nola uh, sludge metal stuff. But, yeah, I think uh, I'm not I'm not too big into into I hate God, but uh, me and Chad's other band, End Times, we actually opened for them back in like 2017, I think. Oh, that's yeah, it. them and Cro Mags when they did a tour together. Which version of Cro-Mags? Just John curious. Cro-Mags. <laughs> John Joseph? Yeah. I Some mean, to be fair, though, nobody likes Harley either. Everybody fucking hates both of them. Yeah. They're, they're uh, fucking idiots. They play way too long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, Cro-Mags, like Age of Coral, and even... Um, what was it? Alpha Omega? Yeah. Uh, both of those records are so solid. 
But man, those guys are such pieces of shit. Yeah, they they really are. Yeah. Yeah, and fucking John Joseph's like an anti-vaxxer, apparently. Dude, I've heard, even before that whole thing, like that show they just did, even before all that, I always heard that he was just like a major prima donna, like total rock star, spoiled mm-hmm. bitch attitude. I mean, when, when we played with him, he, I mean, he definitely wasn't like cool guy or anything, but I mean, he, you, you could tell he was like busy, at least. Yeah. So, I mean, but he was, like, talking to people, and he didn't seem, like, at least, like, he didn't give off a douchebag vibe or anything, like, when we were talking to him. Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he was cool. I mean, he even shouted us out on stage, like, actually, like, shouted out in times by name. Huh. So it's cool that he actually, like, remembered. Yeah. Like, the names yeah. of the bands that were opening for him, you know? <laughs> now you have COVID. Now you have COVID. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> oh yeah well uh i won't keep you too much longer man and i think, I think we've gone about over just about everything i can think of, really think of but uh <laughs> dude, dude I, man i got some time hmm? if you got any more questions dude i got some time yeah uh i need to actually get back to writing questions down i've been kind of Shooting from the hip these last yeah, few. Yeah, kind of winging it. Pretty much. Uh, like that last one I did with Sammy. I just completely just, you know. Just, <laughs> which, I think mean, you just got to roll with it. Yeah. Which, it's kind of funny. If you go back and watch the beginning of that, it was so so awkward on my part. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I don't know what it was, but I was just like, uh, <laughs> Goat horse cool. <laughs> hey man, you live in your learn. I'm the same way, man. I'm fucking socially awkward most of the time. So I fucking get it. It I mean you just gotta roll with it, dude. Do you uh you remember that old Chris Farley skit where he would like interview people? Mm. Really? No, I I'm I'm pretty young, so I don't remember like a whole lot of like okay. mid to late nineties shit because that's when I was like just like starting to become a kid. How how old are you anyway? Uh, I'm 26. Okay, okay. I'm 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 only I'm a few years older than you. I'll be 30 this year. Oh, okay. So we're not too far off. But um, he used to have this one bit. Like he had Paul McCartney on, and mm-hmm. Je- and Jeff Daniels, um, on another one. But he, he would be he would just be sitting there on their like little set or whatever, uh, and he'd be like. You know, all dressed up in a little suit, just acting like real shy and nervous, and he's like, talking to Paul McCartney from the freaking Beatles. And he's, like, uh-huh. uh huh. Do you uh, do you remember like when uh, you were in the Beatles? Yeah, yeah, I do. That was so cool. <laughs> 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 like his interviews were like just nothing but just that, just awkward, like. I mean, that, you, you, you remember the movie that you were in, Arachnophobia? Yeah, yeah, I was in that one. <laughs> that was a good movie. <laughs> Pretty cool, man. Yeah. Basically, uh, that. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, it, it was like that level, pretty much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, well, oh, shit. So, uh, Doom, if you're still in here, uh, I do still have that Epiphone. It's right here. In all its glory. <laughs> yeah, toured with it, recorded with it. That's the one. <laughs> uh, all right, I got, uh, I got two for you. All right. All right. Um... Uh, Name, and you don't have to, you know, don't overthink it. Just do, like, your own personal opinion or your own personal preference or taste, whatever. Name uh, Big Four for death metal. Uh, Cannibal Corpse, Death, um, Dismember, and Ball Thrower, for sure. Okay. I didn't I didn't see Dismember coming. That's cool. Yeah, they're, they're one of my favorite death metal bands. 
of all of the Swedish death metal, I'd say they're probably my favorite. Yeah, they're my favorite for sure. Because you know, like, like, because Entombed like went on to do like death and roll stuff, and like that, their yeah. their death and roll stuff sounds good, but mm -hmm. like Dismember stayed more like straight death metal. Well, I guess at least or look, they kind of did a little bit of death and roll with uh, what what fucking album is that? Uh, not that like capacity. Oh, Oh, that one, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually love that record. I I've never heard Bad Dismember. Yeah, me neither. They they are one of the few bands that have been just insanely consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, Entombed, not so much. I mean, Entombed's great, and like they're legends for sure. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I just prefer Dismember over them personally. Yeah. Uh, Bloodbath, I. I'd say it would be a, especially like Michael Akerfeld era bloodbath. That, mm -hmm. That's kind of hard to beat. Um, Man, I never got into bloodbath. I don't know why. I just couldn't really get into them. No, uh, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. oh. Man, I don't, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because of Akerfeld's voice or something, and and just the way the riffs hit. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, all right. Well. Jumping point from what was, it, what was it? Cannibal, Bolt Thrower, Dismember, and Death, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right. Uh, name name a couple of bands or a handful of bands that are kind of on your wish list to tour with. Uh, well, ones I haven't mentioned yet. Um, Dying Fetus, uh, Suffocation would be fucking sick. Yeah. Um. God, man, there's so many bands. <laughs> I mean, there's so many bands I love. I mean, we're right off the top, like Dying Fetus and Suffocation. I want to tour with some of like those New York death metal bands, like those East Coast bands. Just yeah. they, they got that like hardcore like vibe in them, you know, because that's what they grew up on. For sure. So they got that influence in their music. I mean, and we have that in our music too. So that's shit like we all like really fuck with. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely like Suffocation, Dying Fetus. Um, who else from New York? Um, Pyrexia would be fucking sick. Oh, okay. Yeah. I forget about them. Yeah, Devourment's another one. Those are our homies. We love to tour with Devourment. Um, shit, I mean, I could list like, <laughs> bands all day, but those are like, yeah. at least like like ones I know can happen, like like those. I'm sure those yeah. could happen. I. If you uh, if you guys book a tour with Dying Fetus, I hope it comes uh, this more this way. Man, I hope we can book a tour with Dying Fetus. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, have you seen all those bands live though? Oh yeah, I've seen Dying Fetus so many times. Yeah, I've only seen Suffocation it's like twice or three times. With or without Frank? Uh, only once with Frank. See, I, I saw them open for Morbid Angel uh, a few years ago. Uh huh. Um, and it was it was like right after they got Tucker uh, Tucker back, mm -hmm. but they hadn't put out uh, the new album quite yet. Um, and Suffocation, it was literally I didn't recognize anybody in the band other than uh, oh, Hob Hobbs and Derek. Mm -hmm. Oh no no I I mean I guess they got. Charlie now he's been in there long enough now but yeah like the, I, saw, I saw them when uh Kevin Alley <laughs> was doing drums for him too that's sick and then I'm pretty <laughs> sure um I'm pretty sure Ricky from Discorge the drummer for Discorge is who was doing like fill-in vocals for suffocation yeah they uh that's who I expected when I when I saw them but mm -hmm. it was uh, another like younger dude yeah um I'm not sure what he's from but I mean, he was killer. It it didn't sound really anything like Frank, but it still fit. Yeah, it 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 still worked for sure. Yeah, but you know, there was no death chop, <laughs> <laughs> except for the one time I saw him. But yeah, Dying Fetus, I've seen a whole bunch. Um, actually, I saw them once. It was so Kevin Talley. Speaking of him, he actually like hopped in on a tour to finish like their like last like week or two because um, I forget their current drummer's name. Um, on that tour, he had, like, a family emergency and had to, like, leave in the middle of the tour. Yeah. And so they got Kevin Talley on board. 
And when they played in Dallas, they played like, since he didn't like know like many of the new songs or anything, uh, he they played like mostly old shit from like the first like two, three albums. And man, it was the fucking sickest set list. And that was the tightest they've ever been when I've seen him. It was in fucking sane. Damn. That, that would have been cool. Uh, yeah. Especially for all your all your uh, old school fans. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I'd I'd go see them even if they just played Reign Supreme front to back. Oh man, dude, have you have, have you seen Dying Fetus before, dude? When you hear In the Trenches live, you're gonna want to fucking just knock somebody out <laughs> straight up. It it makes me want to fucking punch people in the face, dude. <laughs> there there's all kinds of memes about like oh I'm I'm. I'm I'm not getting in the pit, or I'm retired from the pit. <laughs> the first China, the first crash hits, the first China hits. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, there's only there's not been too many. I used to go to all the local hardcore shows at uh, BFW halls and community centers and crap like that. Mm -hmm. um, like, I've been to countless. Like local all ages shows. Oh yeah, same, same here. But uh, the I think since me and my wife have been together, I can only think of one that we've gone to mm -hmm. um, here locally, uh, and it was uh, Ringworm and a handful of local bands. Okay, and it was uh, it was it was my first time getting back into the pit for like in like a two to three year stint or oh, something. Really? <laughs> yeah. As soon as ring warm came on, it was like, I, I just, something kind of came over me. I was like, all right, I got, I got to go hold my shirt. I'll be right back. Yeah. Man, like, I'm pretty sure the last time I moshed was probably the last tour we did with our buddies and steel bearing hand. Uh, I can't remember what show, but I'm pretty sure that was the last time I fucking moshed or anything. Yeah. Some sometimes you just gotta Sometimes you just gotta wild out, dude. Yeah. You just gotta, you just gotta, you gotta get that him. gotta get that windmill out. Gotta mm -hmm. throw in some uh, donkey kicks or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got him with that karate. <laughs> Somebody asked uh hang on. Somebody asked uh where we rate obituary. I mean those dudes are fucking kings. I love obituary. I think, I think just about everybody does, but yeah, I've I've been revisiting uh, slowly. We rot a lot here lately, just because of uh, James Murphy. Uh huh. Like, I'm a I've been on a huge James Murphy kick, just going back over his whole discography. Yeah, I listened to that one Disincarnate album a lot. Yeah, oh, it's so good. Yeah, what dreams of the carrying kind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That album's fucking sick. So good. Uh, his his first solo album is kind of meh, but uh, his second one's pretty cool. I don't think I've checked out his solo stuff. Um, his second one actually has uh, it's got a lot of guest vocalists, like guys that he's jammed with over the years. Mm -hmm. Um, it's got Devin Townsend on a couple songs, and Chuck Billy, and then another guy who's a little more obscure. Oh, really? It's like a mix of like. Well, you, with Devin Townsend, you can kind of imagine, like, gets kind of more experimental, but it's yeah. got heavy stuff, too. But, uh, um, it, let me see, like, uh, what else? Spiritual Healing, he did Low, he did Sully We Rot, mm -hmm. uh, Cancer was a really sick band. I didn't even know he was in cancer. Oh yeah, really? Mm-hmm. Which is kind of ironic in a really crappy way, considering his health problems he had later on. Mm-hmm. But I guess he's doing fine now. That's good to hear. Um, I'm gonna double check on that. I want to make sure. <laughs> Put in my mouth. I'm almost positive. Yeah, I see it. James Murphy. Okay. And yeah, well, he's he's the only person I recognize off the top off the top here. I thought I saw something about Nicholas Barker playing playing hmm. with him. You know him? Uh -huh. Oh, he he played live with him in '93. Oh, okay. uh, 
Nicholas Barker is a really sick drummer. Uh, he was Cradle of Filth's original drummer for the first three or four records. And then he did uh, my favorite Demi Borgir albums, mm -hmm. um, like Death Cult and the one that I can't pronounce. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was really into that band in high school. Demu? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Dude, they're so good. Yeah. Um, which I guess, I don't know if he left or if they fired him, but uh, I was watching an interview with him recently where he was talking like him and Shagrath don't really talk anymore because uh -huh. uh, he blamed him for making Dimu sound like Pantera. So <laughs> Well, like Nick's drumming style, he borrows a lot from like Vinnie Paul mm -hmm. and Gene Hoagland. You know, like I would think anybody would want to. Those I mean, guys are sick. Those but... guys are like masters of groove. So, uh, I, I I got to meet Gene Hoagland when I was sixteen. Oh, really? Uh, um, he towered me. <laughs> like, I'm I'm about six foot now. Uh, at 16, maybe 5'9", to oh. something, you know, maybe. Um, and I was just like, you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he's a massive dude. Not just tall, but I mean, he was a massive freaking dude. Uh-huh. Um, that was whenever he was playing with Death Clock Live. Oh, okay. Um, well, he was super nice and friendly, but, I like, that was the first person of any band I actually got to meet so I didn't know how to even talk to him <laughs> yeah I mean, I can't even remember who like the first like famous metal person I've met I yeah. don't know honestly probably like the dudes from Guild War actually oh yeah yeah I saw them like I, I didn't start going to like shows and shit until like after I graduated high school because I was like kind of a sheltered kid you know oh, yeah <laughs> So like goat like like goat whore was doing a tour with like Havoc I'm pretty sure and the Casualties. Oh, that's cool. And so that was like one of the first shows I like ever went to, basically. I got to meet those guys. They were all pretty cool. I I love Sammy. <laughs> yeah, I know Sam and Sammy. They talk a lot. They're always talking about gear and shit. Yeah. Uh, I suppose Sammy offered. I'm gonna try to take him up on it. He offered to do one of these like once a month with me. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll see how that goes. Oh, I'll be fucking sick. Um, I got I got a lot of these lined up now. Like they just kind of piled on pretty quick. Oh, that's awesome though, man. Uh, I got Kyle from Undeath coming on here next week. I'll definitely have to watch that then. I fucking love that dude. Yeah. Then, and then Sven from Beast the week after that. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm trying to talk to the Outer Heaven guys right now, uh, trying to work out when to have them on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but um, and I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of pestering Brian Hoffman right now, trying to get him on here. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, sent, I sent him a thing asking him, and I saw that he read it, but he never replied. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully he gets back to you, man. That'd be fucking sick. Yeah. I mean, we we've, we've talked a, a handful of times on here. Mm -hmm. um, lot we got into an in depth thing talking about World War Two stuff. Oh, really? Like a few like a few weeks ago, just out of the blue. Uh, it was so weird and random. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, he, I mean, he's cool. Uh, I think he's kind of private though, so yeah. he might not he might not be into it. Yeah, I mean, if he's into it, then that's cool. If not, then oh well. Yeah, uh, we still got plenty of plenty of people coming on. Mm -hmm. Fucking, uh, we may have to do another one of these sometime and uh, get Chris and Sam there. And yeah, man, I'm down. I know they'd love to do it. That'd be cool. I haven't done any of these with more than just like a one on one. Mm -hmm. I'm just like you know how video call video calls are. You yeah. Accept talk over each other as it is oh yeah so with a group i just imagine it just being a mess the whole time yeah maybe not <laughs> I mean, at least when we do like group interviews we try to like speak one at a time at least like the band you guys are probably used to it so. yeah yeah i mean we've been doing a lot of fucking interviews over the past few months <laughs> i mean 
y'all did a freaking giveaway with Revolver Magazine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, I thought that was surreal. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, man, this whole record release has been extremely surreal, especially like with like not being able to tour and shit. Yeah. And like basically only seeing it like on the internet. <clears throat> it's been very, very surreal to say the least. I, I think it's just very refreshing for people to to hear stuff that's real again. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, some people want to say like a, a, a trend of or new wave of old school death metal, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. whatever crap mm -hmm. name they want to slap on it to categorize it to, you know, whatever. But to me, it's just, it, it's records that actually sound like people playing again. Yeah, and, exactly. And that's like what's fucking sick. Cause I mean, for a while it just got like more technical and then of course, like got like way more fast, like a lot more shit going on. And it's like, like <clears throat> people can't really vibe with that as much, you know, yeah. like you got to keep it simple so you can like catch people's ear and like hook them, yeah. you know, and that's what like, that's what we like really try to do is just keep it simple so we can like, like hook line and sinker, you know, yeah. like, so, I remember, <laughs> I remember in high school when Necrophagus was coming out and they were like the hot thing. That was like the bar. Yeah. You know? It was like, oh, it doesn't get any fucking more brutal than this. And then like, it seemed like every year it just got more. Ridiculous. Very, yeah. Like production became inhuman. Uh huh. It was like way too sterile. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, everybody using the same everyone using the same stuff the same tones uh-huh everything was like all the drums samples were, so yeah uh there are bands that record with just their toms and and cymbals mm -hmm. and wouldn't even record wouldn't even bother tracking kick drums nope uh i would see guys like they just had kick pads set up in the studio because mm -hmm. they're like yeah it's just gonna do sample replacement anyway yep like it's like really you're not even gonna I don't even bother drum editing. Just going to go full samples. Hey, fuck, editing drums is a fucking pain in the ass, though. So I'll say that. It's still, like... I've like, done it full once. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, though, like, it's like... Uh, that's not the real shit. Right. I, uh... I, I used to have a thrash band. Mm -hmm. um, thrash, metalcore-ish, whatever. Um... It was like sick of it all, but like with dual guitar harmonies thrown in. Uh huh. If you can ma imagine that. Um, whenever uh, we went to record, uh, I was I was kind of there throughout the whole process with the engineer, and because mm -hmm. he because he was a friend of mine and was trying to teach me recording as well, and you know walking me through the whole process of drum editing, and we we recorded live room. So we basically did like three or four takes of each song. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of cut and edited the best take, like the best verse, the best pre-chorus, chorus, whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, and then edited the drums. And uh, it was it was a friggin' nightmare. I, I never want to do that again. <laughs> From now on, if like if I ever get back into recording live drums, uh -huh. like myself, um w like better be a one take wonder that's all yeah. i can say yeah that's my that's my least favorite part of being in a band is recording because like me especially like I, I i have a curse of like i can hear like just the littlest shit yeah i mean it, it, it's a blessing and a curse but it's mostly a curse because like i'll make one mistake and i'm like i gotta do it again and i'll just like do it <laughs> until i get it right you know so if uh, if you want to do anything of any merit, you have to be fanatical. Yeah, you know? pretty much. I mean, hey, the the results speak for themselves. You know, you have uh, e you guys have put out easily what is one of the has to be one of the most talked about, one of the most popular, you know, extreme metal albums of the year. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I mean, it is what it is. It's yeah. like...
feel like you see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you guys are even getting played on, like, series and stuff now, aren't you? Yeah, that's fucking – that's crazy to me. I'd never yeah. probably be on series, like, ever. Or anything sure. like that, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I mean, we've definitely worked, like – We've worked it really, really fucking hard for, for all this yeah. shit, you know? So it feels good for, like, things to, like, finally be paying off. Right. Well, man, uh, uh, I think that pretty much does it. Yeah. Pretty much does it for me, man. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. I had a blast. This is fun. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry for my uh, ill-preparedness. Oh, dude, it's whatever. Uh, awkward pauses and all that but. hey man I'm, I'm the same way i just fucking <laughs> shit. i just like take shit and run with it that's how i do it dude word so i get it yeah but man uh yeah this is fun we'll have to do this again sometime maybe get everyone else on here yeah absolutely man we'd love to sick well but you have uh you have yourself a good evening yeah i mean you too hey thanks everyone for uh hanging out appreciate absolutely. it everybody thank you for tuning in uh I was about to say, does anyone else have any questions before we hop off here? Perfectionism. Do you re-record every time you are not happy? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, when we recorded Crypt Device, so I did um, all like 98% of the rhythm tracks for both guitars. And so uh, since, like I said, I can hear like tuning inconsistencies and like picking inconsistencies and like just I can hear all kinds of shit. If it's not played right in the way I want to hear it, then I'll just do it over and over again until I get it right. Yeah. And so, like I said, since I recorded, I recorded almost all of the rhythm tracks for for Crypt of Ice, so it was pretty fucking brutal having to re-record a whole lot of that shit. Did uh, Did you do just one guitar left, one right, or did you do like quad tracking? I honestly I can't remember so. If I'm being honest, so when we were recording, that, like, whole, like, two-week period was incredibly stressful, just because, yeah. like, um, like we'd just gotten back from a tour. We were in the middle of, like, signing the deal with Century Media, and then uh, we were in the middle of finishing the record, and then, we, like, me and Chad and Chris were all working, like, 40 hours a week on top yeah. of the band and all this shit, you know? Yeah. And so, like, I was just incredibly stressed, and most of, like, the studio time is, like, a blur, to me, honestly. Oh, and we were also in the studio when, like, COVID was hitting the U.S., and so that's, like, right when everything was shutting down. So a lot of it's, like, a blur, but from, like, most of what I can remember is, like, it was, like, it was, it was pretty tough. Yeah. Honestly. Well, they came through it, yeah. put out a I, bad I would, record. I'd like to say it came out pretty good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um. And I, I was not to keep blowing smoke up your ass or nothing, but <laughs> it, uh, me personally being, you know, a gear page, mm -hmm. I especially appreciate the tone. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's unique. I mean, it actually stands out. Like there's a tone that I associate with your band. Yeah. And that, and I mean, obviously the songwriting is killer, mm -hmm. but, uh, that that to me is like especially a part of it you know what i mean like I uh, it, it, it's not huh i like thank you i like i appreciate that because like that's something i worked like really hard on to like try to help capture what's like get like my own tone and it, part of it's in thanks to our producer daniel who was also the very so he was one of the first members of frozen soul played our first show and then actually he quit after that but that's besides the point like, he helped me like really find my tone for this record so a lot of credit goes to him for that but it's something that like we're both really proud of and the the thing that almost baffles me like the gear by seeing like what you like what you're playing through i feel like i should be able to instantly kind of hear what it would sound like mm -hmm. and it it sounds so much just thicker and heavier and, and, you know, so different than what I would imagine because mm -hmm. like I've seen, it's like you see other people, you know, use at least similar 
and you know I mean, completely you, there. I can't tell you how many bands I've seen that use a 6505 and oversized Mesa cab, you know? Like pretty exactly. much everyone that's in a band around here uses the same thing, you know? Yeah. So it's really, and, we really tried to like really capture like our own sound with like sure. these things, you know? Cause like I said earlier, part of the reason like we use these is cause like you can, they're all over the world. And like, if we need yeah. like, to backline, it's not going to be a problem. But, you know, and it, it, yeah, we're a gear page, but at the end of the day, it's uh, more about, not to sound cliche, but it's more about the player and, you know, who who's playing the uh -huh. gear and what kind of music are you writing? Mm -hmm. And, you know, to take, to take uh, you know, a Maxon boost, EMG pickups, PV, Mesa, oversized cat, like stuff that people have been using to death since like, you know, late 90s, early 2000s mm -hmm. and, and sound completely different than, you know, like 90 some percent of those people. You know, it, it goes to show it doesn't matter what you're playing. It's how yeah, you're playing it. Yeah, you're exactly. Playing. Yeah, I mean, most of your tone is in your hands, you know? Absolutely. Well, bud, I, all right. Second goodbye. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, mean, we'll mean it for real this time. All right, all right. Thanks yeah. again, bud. Yeah, thanks again for having me, dude. This is a lot of fun. I'm definitely down to do it again. I'm sure the other guys are as well. Oh, yeah. Look forward to it. Yeah, all right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Y'all have a good night. See you, everybody. Later. Later.